Number 59. A sample of gas isolated from unrefined petroleum contains 90.0% CH4, which is methane, 8.9% C2H6, with this, which is ethane, and 1.1% C3H8, which is propane, at a total pressure, so a total pressure of 307.2 kilopascals. What is the partial pressure of each component of this gas? And then they say the percentages given indicate the percent of the total pressure that is due to each component. Okie dokie. So I'm first going to talk about the total pressure, right? The total pressure in this whole sample of gas, it's a mixture. We have three different compounds in this gas, but the total gas pressure, so the total pressure is equal to 307.2 kilopascals. From this total pressure, we have three components, right? So from here, we have CH4, we have the ethane, which is C2H6, and we also have the propane, which is C3H8. Now they did tell us the percentages of them, right? They told us that in this whole sample of gas, 90% was made up of the methane, CH4. Uh, they told us that 1.1% is made up of the ethane. Actually, nope, just kidding. Did you guys catch that? 8.9% was made up of the ethane, and then the 1.1% was the propane, the C3H8. Okie dokie. Now, just to make sure that there's no hidden percentages, always just add up your percentages just to make sure that it equals 100%, but in this case, it does. So we have no hidden compounds that are in this gas, right? So now we just need to find the partial pressure of each component. When they say partial pressure, this is a chemistry term for just saying the pressure of an individual compound. So we would always say the partial pressure of CH4. That just means that you're finding the pressure for just CH4, the partial pressure for C2H6, or the partial pressure of C3H8. But this is basically based off of percentages, and a general percentage is always percent equals something divided by something uh, times 100. And remember, it's always a part divided by a whole. Now the whole here would be the whole pressure of the gas, right? The total pressure. So maybe I'll just erase the whole and I'll put the total pressure. So maybe I'll put pressure total. And the part is the individual pressures of the compounds that are in the gas. So I'll just put P compound. So it's the pressure of the specific compounds divided by the pressure total. Now in this case, they gave us the percentages for each one, and they gave us the total pressure. So all we have to do is basically just find out that pressure of the compound, and that's the partial pressure. Right? The partial pressure of, uh, is just saying the pressure of a specific compound. So let's set up these equations. So we have 90.0 equals something over something times 100, because that's just the percent formula. We're looking for the pressure of CH4. So you could label this as X, doesn't really matter divided by the total pressure, which is 307.2. The next one, if we just set this up, it would be 8.9 equals something divided by something times 100. And in this case, we're looking for the pressure of C2H6, and that would be over the total pressure, 307.2. And then lastly, it would be 1.1 equals something over something times 100. And in this case, it would be the pressure of C3H8 over the total pressure, which is 307.2. Now I'm going to do this all in one shot in the calculator, but all you're doing is basically solving for the numerator, right? The, the partial pressure, aka the pressure of each individual compound. So let's see. Pressure of CH4, the methane. Let's see, we get I'm going to do 90 divided by 100, 
and then times by 307.2. So I get 276.48, and the units would have to go with what the total pressure units is. So since the total pressure was in kilopascals, this is in kilopascals. Let's do it for the other one. 8.9 divided by 100, and then times by 307.2. The pressure of C2H6 equals 27.3408, and that's kilopascals. And then lastly, the pressure of C3H8 would be 1.1 divided by 100 times 307.2, and that's 3.2. 3792, and that's kilopascals. And there you go. Those are your individual partial pressures. Now, I didn't round. Uh, this this question's kind of a little bit up in the air because some professors want you to go by sig figs, some don't. So I would just ask your teacher or professor if they care about this type of question with significant figures. But in order to get the exact amount, you would need these exact numbers. If you add these all together, they would come up to 307.2. All right? So hopefully this helps. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel, and I will see you all in later lessons. Hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.